Hello and welcome to another comp whiz tutorial. I'm Ross and this is our fourth tutorial with GIMP. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to make a desktop background similar or exactly like this one. I made it like uh, 2012 because supposedly the world's gonna go into chaos then. But uh, anyways, here's the desktop background that we're gonna try to make. Uh, yes and here and we will use my desktop resolution which is 1366 by 768 click ok exit out of that one and we'll start out the desk the background by going into our bucket fill and filling up it with black now we'll create a new layer and go into our pencil tool and flip it so we have white as our foreground color now go into the smallest brush which is uh, the one pixel brush in the pencil and now just make a couple or quite a few uh, dots uh, that those will be your stars we'll use a texture or I mean distort on GIMP called sparkle and that looks pretty good so we'll go into filters the sorts <laughs> sorry filters light and shadow sparkle now I have my flare intensity at 0.5 but I for this project I'd like to use about 0.3 so there we go and uh, here this and then click OK and this might take a little bit depending on how many stars you put and the when notice how this is bigger than the rest that is because I had I went like this accidentally with my uh, pencil tool so it made the star a bit bigger but that's okay it makes it a little different and that's how we're gonna so now we'll create a new layer on top of that and make it a fil uh, filters light and shadow supernova now make it a like a deep blue color maybe a darker blue or somewhere and click exactly in the middle or as close as you can get it in this of the screen and then uh, make the radius quite large the mass spokes a little more or less there uh, and okay see that makes a pretty good supernova so now just uh, hide that and we'll create another new layer on top of that now I will show you how to uh, you get this and here go into Internet Explorer and into Google Images type in cracked desert clay I am using this or this, they're the same image, uh, but this is 400 by 30 and this is 320 by 240, so I'll use the this one. And now I will do save picture as, and I already have this uh, saved, but I'll save it again. Here, uh, saved. And now just exit out that. Now open, then do file, open as layers, and click whatever you saved it as Clo I saved it as close up cracked desert display desert clay and click open now this will be in the in a rectangle instead of a square we need it to be in a square or this will not work so instead of 300 will be it will be 400 and we will move this so uh, whatever your uh, desktop height resolution is do that seven minus seven sixty eight so I will make it seven sixty eight by seven sixty eight which will make it still a square and now we'll align it to the image center it so it looks like that okay now this is how we make a, a exploding planet it looks like an exploding planet and it's very cool so click invert in the colors dialog invert but I uh, actually have it inverted so now uh, click fil filters 
sorry about that. My screen recorder quit on me. So now we'll go uh, filters map map object. Now we'll map it onto a sphere and click instead of point light we'll go into no light. So now I'll click OK. This might take a little bit, but it won't. Uh, it's not excessively long. So okay, now you're into this. Now we'll need to go into filters, distorts, polar coordinates, and click two polar, and then click OK. Now we'll need to uh, just select by the black color in this and click delete, so that'll make it transparent. Now we will need to go into layer transform rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise and do the select all filter and then to make uh, it look like it's actually exploding it will use a distort called wind wind pretty much does what it says it makes it look windy <laughs> so you can make the threshold a little bit smaller makes it look blurrier and bigger the strength is how much big how bigger it is so now we will I'll make it a little bit bigger than I did last time so okay and then we'll do layer transform to go back to the normal as we had so that the polar coordinates will not be confused and then you'll need to do two polar now click OK and you'll have a very good looking uh, sun or exploding sun so uh, now we'll need the close up of the cracked desert clay now looks like a sphere that's exploding so now we'll make it uh, like the we made this blue so we should make the exploding sun blue so I like to use deep sea. It looks very good with this, and we will go, and it just fits the uh, exploding sun. So now go now while you're in the beer blend tool, click gradient map, and then you have the gradient, and then go into colors map gradient map. Now this looks very pretty good, except for this outer line. We do not want this outer line in there because it doesn't tie good with the uh, part. So we'll just blur it a little bit, and now we'll go into smudge. The smudge helps a lot, and make it oh too small, uh, and then make it a little bit, and then just smudge it out. But I uh, don't smudge the actual lighter part of the, uh, sorry, uh, of the actual planet because that does not look good. We need the darken. So just uh, keep playing around with this until you have a pretty realistic looking blue sun. And uh, yeah, that looks fairly good um, and if you wanna just touch up on that you were perfectly welcome to so now go into your text tool and uh, do 48 as your text uh, size and in your fonts we will use uh, Rockwell extra bold so now uh, 2012 was my uh, text because it looks like the earth is actually exploding but um, now we but uh, 48 isn't very big so we'll use 64 and then when you see that that 64 you can only see the 202 and 0 and 1 make this bigger by scaling it GIMP makes a boundary uh, size I do not know why but uh, they just have it I really do not know why so don't ask me <laughs> now go into right click on your 2012 or whatever you typed in in your text uh, layer and click text to selection this is the exact same thing as alpha to selection except it only work except text to selection is the only is an option that you can only use when it's a text layer so I'm just gonna use alpha to selection just because I want to so 
now uh, just press delete and that will delete the actual color in it but you'll still have your select on there so now go into uh, gradient and then go uh, up back up to FG to transparent but uh, now we'll it'll be your foreground color to transparent so click your eyedropper tool and just press uh, on the sun part like a good color that you think would be good for this part of the two going out so I think that would be pretty good so now go back to your gradient or your blend as GIMP likes to call it and in your 2012 uh, click out to that side or whatever uh, whatever looks well and then select all that looks okay it's not the best so I'll just delete it. you should delete it after every time you try it and then to make it look that looks pretty good it's not not the best so I think I'm gonna make it a little smaller so then uh, select all see that does not look good at all because you can't even see the lettering so you have to at least make it like up to the end of the two and then like that you still can't see it so uh, you can just keep playing around with this and it works best when you go from the bottom top of the left two to the bottom of the right two and then when you select all it looks it looks fairly good but uh, you gotta do a little bit less than that and then it'll look see that looks decent it's just it's not the best but it's okay and that's pretty much you all you can do or you can even uh, change this you can invert the colors and that would that looks horrendous because we uh, smudged it uh, but also you can make a uh, exploding sun that actually looks like it's exploding red by using instead of deep sea you can use uh, incandescent looks very good with this uh, crack desert um, on my web page uh, comp with tutorials I have a picture of my exploding sun and also on my YouTube page the background image is pretty much this picture and I just love using this because it really looks realistic and thanks for watching. I hope you can make a desktop background for yourself um, using this technique. And thanks for watching. My website is compwiztutorials.webs.com, and that is my username also on YouTube, CompWizTutorials. And please rate, subscribe, and comment. And thanks for watching.